Hello and welcome everyone. This is the third episode of Mo's Adventure Devlog. This week I have been working on the map system of the game. The main character carries a map in his backpack which helps him find his way to the end of the maze. It is a very helpful and useful feature of the game at the moment, since the player cannot see the maze from up top. For those who are new, Mouse Adventure is a maze crawler puzzle game based on procedurally generated mazes. It takes place in a cartoony environment with light-hearted storyline. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be notified when the new devlog is out. I really appreciate your support. Last week we discussed tools programming and the small editor window I made for generation of mazes. After all the refactoring is done with the maze generation, it was time to start with the player map. At this stage, texture of the map was already being generated when the maze was generated, which is already displayed in the editor window. One of the plans was to use this texture on the 3D map model the main character carries on his backpack. The map model the character carries in his backpack is an animated 3D model that opens like a scroll. We put a squarish area into the inner face of this 3D object and assign the generated maze texture onto the second UV area which helps us put it onto both the 3D mesh. So in the first UV map there will be the scrollish paperish texture and on top of it into the square area we put the maze's map texture. It might sound a bit complex but it's just textures layered on top of each other into different areas. Something very similar to this was actually already done in the previous version of the game but it was revealing the whole map which is not what we really want in this version. Also, generation of the map was slower and less accurate in the former version, which was pixel-based. By pixel-based, which I mean is interior and wall of each cell was visualized using single pixel, which was not very informative and inside of the cell was as thick as the walls. In the old version, complexity of the texture generation algorithm was O4N, which is right now ON and we can generate the textures in the linear time, which is four times better than the old version. Rather than painting pixels using the maze data, I used small textures to visualize them, which helped me draw the cell and the walls of the cell at one step and give them proper volume. When this was being done, vertical and horizontal padding of the walls also kept in mind, so it always shows an accurate and centered presentation of the map. I also added a red wall to the position of the exit gate, so player always knows where the exit is. After these changes and optimizations, Eugene updated the shader to give the map some noise-based wobble effect, which made the map look a little more magical. However, later we realized giving all the details of the map to the player at once kind of kills the purpose of exploration. We want the player to try to find the exit and find goods and collectibles along the way. So we came up with the idea of adding a fog of war to the map. Fog of War is a technique used in game design that is hiding the unexplored parts of the map, which helps you use the curiosity of the player and leads them to explore all the hidden parts of the map in case they can find something. So I added a matrix of visited cells to the maze data and updated it when player moves from one cell to the another one, and then used this information to draw another block on top of the maze map. In this extra layer, visited cells are transparent and the other cells have a blocking white layer on top. So this part hides the rest of the map and only visited cells are visible in the user's map. The fog of war also hit the exit gate and now player will only be able to know where the exit gate is once they actually visit that cell contains the exit gate, which was perfect in this regard. To be able to create this effect, I did some additions to the shader Eugene created. I added some extra variables to the shader, which are player position, player rotation, maze size and fog of war texture. With all these information, I was able to draw an arrow representing the player, rotate it and place it onto the map correctly and paste the fog of war texture on top of the map. It was a bit challenging and I had to get to the paper and pen again to do some math and right now it works quite well and accurate. After all these changes, here is how it looks.
probably this is not the final version of it yet and subject to change, but I'm very happy and satisfied with how it turned out and the progress I made this week. And again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel not to miss the next devlog. And if you have any question, please join the Discord channel and ask away. See you soon and take care.